Hi guys, Mr. Johnny here. In this video I will show you how this flashlight looks inside. And that was a LED flashlight that had that was powered from three AAAs and had a little specialized chip which uh, had uh, three modes which were pretty standard low brightness, high brightness and strobe and not quite a long ago actually already the chip died and I replaced it with a little open based linear constant current source and uh, uh, just a few days ago I was having fun with writing a bit simplistic code for microcontrollers and I actually wrote a software for ATtiny13 which I've used here and um, in many flashlights you will see such an approach where they have an LED focus where they have an LED all right and they have some switching transistor let's say a MOSFET okay in channel source in common and on don't be plus sometimes they have a little resistor in series sometimes they don't and they just PWM this the disadvantage is um, when the PWM remains constant it has three fixed levels but when the battery voltage changes the average uh, voltage, the average current, the uh, LEDCs changes as well because uh, average voltage of a PWM signal is actually uh, is a function of a uh, amplitude of that signal, which is determined by the battery voltage and the duty cycle. So, in my in this case, I've used a quite a neat approach, which I didn't see any other anybody else using. That I have an also have a MOSFET have an LED that goes to B plus battery positive and here I have an op amp oh, that actually goes through a shunt sorry so it's a current source okay and here I have my reference which I use TL4314 but since it's uh, in this configuration where the reference pin is hooked to the cathode it is pretty high like two and a half volts I don't wanna drop 2.5 volts across the shunt so I've used the divider and here I set it to 100 millivolts something like that and here I have a 3 1 ohm resistance in parallel so it's really 0.33 ohms so that equals 330 milliamps, which you will see in a video later. And, okay, that, that gives me fixed brightness, but how do I control it with a PWM, you might ask? Well, all I do is I have another MOSFET, which pulls non-inverting input to ground, and I feed a PWM here, inverted PWM. That's it, because effectively if you have like 50%, 100% PWM, it will be zero brightness. So I need inverted PWM. And you can do it in um, settings of the, of the microcontroller when you pro make your software. So that's a hunch. And rest of the circuit is just, you will see... Uh, Actually, let me show you it in Eagle, because it will be easier. Okay, sorry for this crude screen capture, but what a, we have to live with that. So here you can see the microcontroller itself. It has this divider here, which is connected to second channel of ADC, and it senses battery voltage. It senses battery voltage from actually this point, which is after this transistor. In this section, with these three transistors, as you can see, I I steal, but it's an open source open source project, so it's hard to call it stealing. I took this way, took this uh, circuit from a transistor tester by Carl Heinz and Marcus, 
and I love this way of switching because you have a single button which is connected here and with that single button you can control uh, the thing Hui. No, and the another advantage of that is that uh, when this scene is off, the flashlight, it consumes absolutely zero power because, well, except some leakage, but that's very tiny, less than one microamp. Uh, so yeah, this transistor is a power switch which supplies power from a V plus, which is battery positive, to the VCC. VCC being the power the, for the chip, for the microcontroller divider and uh, open and the shunt voltage reference as well so how that does it work and yeah I made a real mistake here is that right here where you can see collector connected to this point there should be an LED between this point and the collector because in this way the, this way the thing won't work uh, if you know to know why, let me know. I'm gonna do a follow-up video explaining why it doesn't work. I want to keep this video as short as possible, really. So when initially this transistor is off because there's a resistor that keeps it shut off. The moment you press a button, you effectively pull the current from the base. This is shorted into the base emitter, so you effectively turn this transistor on. Then microcontroller wakes up and. Uh, puts logic one here which turns this transistor on and this thing latches on next if you have a proper LED here you will have like 1.6 volts at this point the LED voltage plus collector meter drop and yeah if you don't have LED there there will be a little collector meter voltage drop and the moment you press a button again there won't be enough voltage here available to turn the base emitter junction on and pull this pin low which is this transistor effectively is a button, just like a button, it pulls this pin low and the microcontroller switches brightness, uh, PWM, this way. Yeah. So let me demonstrate it in action. That's a low brightness. Seems pretty bright on camera. That's medium brightness and that's high brightness. And the next click just turns it off. Works like magic and thanks to that circuit with this transistors, this consumes zero current because microcontroller is completely off and so does everything else. And so is everything else. It's not sleeping, it's fully off. Yep, so that's that. Oh boy, I already babbling for 8 minutes. Okay, next part. So that's this little controller that you see right now. I had to do a little bodge here. Namely, if you will be able to see it though, that's better. Namely, this LED, surface mount LED, and this 1K resistor. Uh, I took this section, this transistor, this transistor, and this, from a transistor tester by Marcus and Carl Heinz. I loved that way of switching power, because uh, in off state the microcontroller is not sleeping. The microcontroller is absolutely off and consumes zero microamps, not even one microamp. I couldn't, I can just can't register the current consumption on my, on my meter, which goes um, to a fraction to tens of microamps. So yeah, not even one microamp it draws. So it's awesome. But uh, originally I thought this this LED is only for the you know, for the indication, but meh, it's not. It's actually providing some voltage drop here, voltage available here, so that when you press a button, you short these two pads together, and you pull, push in current into this, into to the base of this transistor, thus pulling the pin of the micro low, and triggering a 
what is a button effectively because this transistor acts as a button which pulls this pin to the ground but when you have when you don't have any LED here you have just collector emitter drop and it's very tiny it's not enough to turn the base to turn the base on base emitter on this transistor on so yeah red LED is a minimum you can use green blue whatever or even white just make sure to yeah 1.6 volt works excellent let me solder the wires back on and show you okay I checked the battery in there through an ammeter just to show you the current. Alright, so now when I press it, goes the low setting. And that's a PWM at about one third. What the hell is that? Okay, you know what the problem is? Why it doesn't switch? This. See this piece which shorts this point to ground? Maybe you'll be able to see it. I hope you can. This little piece of solder. Let me get rid of that and you'll see that it will work just fine. Right, solder blob removed. Okay, gonna mix this up, trying not to short out anything because that would be tragedy. Right, yo, that's a low setting, that's a medium setting, which is a half of PWM, and it's a high setting, which you can actually tell already because from the numbers. So 100% PWM, you have 330, half PWM you have 170, it's about there, you know, this stuff is not perfect here, but the brightness levels are just fine, you can see low, medium, and high, high is full power. And you see that LED blinking every time I click the button. Because effectively, if I click the, but click the button, uh, the base emitter voltage. This transistor shunts this LED and this collector emitter drop with its, with its base emitter drop. Let me show you. Yeah. Look at the LED on the board. I click it. works really well and believe it or not i really designed this one <laughs> i even wrote the software for it which is bizarre <clears throat> and as you see the software freaking works which is even more bizarre uh, by the way there is nothing on this side as you can see i love this copper clad because you can see the traces from the other side I absolutely love this feature. Yes, I'm gonna put it inside here. It will look just fine. Okay, I packed it up, connected the LED button, uh, charging socket, which goes to the um, TP4056 board. Externally, because <laughs> obviously there's not much space here. You can see I mm, I laid it out quite neatly actually. So yeah, as you can see those two wires that go for the button are insulated with a heat shrink, so no touchy. They won't touch. They're covered in like her something like a varnish magnet wire kind of stuff, but nah, still I would prefer to have a heat shrink over it. And then I have a little bit of heat shrink holding the red wire in place which is an anode of LED, it's connected to where the battery positive connects to and the negative of the LED is a blue wire which connects to the drain of this MOSFET MOSFET is PhD, mm -hmm. that's a small, pretty smart transistor 
since it has PhD. Yeah, it'll probably get a dislike for that job, but whatever. Okay, so that's it, guys. Uh, scene is charging to the TP40 with the TP4056 board. As you can see, which I added a switch here to switch the charge current 0.3 amps and 1 amp for 18650s and 0.3 for this small um, cell phone like batteries. So that's that. Thanks for watching. See ya.